Hello, and welcome to Coptic Scriptorium. So today I will just be speaking about the texts and data model. Uh, we have a number of corpora already online. And if you scroll down the website, uh, you'll see a number of texts. And I'm going to start by showing you how to search our text corpora. Uh, we use the search and visualization tool ANIS, which is developed for corpus linguistics and has been customized for Coptic. For each of the corpora on our website, you see a little link that I just clicked that says search this corpus in ANIS. And you click on that link and it will take you to the server at Georgetown University that hosts all of our corpora inside the ANIS search and visualization tool. In the lower left, you'll see the text corpora that are available currently to search. The little I tells you information about the corpus. So here you can see um, Abraham, our father, uh, has annotations um, for column breaks. It has annotations for highlights and renderings of the manuscript letters. It has annotations for the language of origin for um, loan words in the text. It has line breaks. It has normalized text. It has bound groups in Coptic annotated and so forth. So if you're ever interested in what kind of annotations are in a particular text corpus, click on the little I and it will tell you all the information and, and it will also tell you who's worked on this text corpus over here. So the tr English translation, for example, is from Rebecca Craywick. So if we want to search Abraham, our father, uh, if you click on the corpus you want to search, you'll see um, the system generates some example queries. So you can click on an example query here. You can also make up your own. And you can search in multiple corpora. So if you right click or hold the um, control or key in a Mac, you can select multiple corpora. So for now, I'm just going to search Abraham and we'll search for the word for God in Coptic. If you want to type in your own words in Coptic and you do not have the Unicode font and keyboard installed, we have a little virtual keyboard here so that you can type in the letters yourself here even if you don't have a Coptic keyboard installed on your computer. So here on the right we have all the hits for the word Nuta, God, in Abraham our father. And you can toggle this little option base text here and this will change the appearance of the search results. So currently the search results are showing bound groups of Coptic words in their normalized form. This means they've been normalized for spelling and punctuation, diacritics, superlinear strokes, uh, and other markings like that have been removed. If you want to see what the text looked like in the original manuscript, you can click on the original base text and this shows you a transcription from the manuscript which includes things like these superlinear strokes. This is also in the bound group form. If you want to look at it um, in the form of the individual morphs in Coptic, you can see it here. So you can see the preposition M and the article P and the noun Nuta are all visualized separately. Likewise, if you just hit norm, you will see all the morphs separated and 
they're in the normalized form, not the um, original diplomatic manuscript transcription form. Go back to the bound groups, normalized bound groups. If you're interested in seeing what those annotations uh, I described earlier are and what they mean, click here and you will see a grid of all the annotations for this text in a multi-layer standoff markup mode. And you'll see on the left the name of the annotation. So CB, this would be the column break. Lang would be language of origin. LB is the line break in the manuscript. Norm is the normalized word. Norm group is the normalized bound group. Org is the original a manuscript notation with the uh, words divided up into morphs. Or a group is the original manuscript transcription uh, with the data organized as a bound groups. P is just paragraph breaks for the translations. The XML ID is the page number in the manuscript. So this is from manuscript XL, page 93. And all those manuscript annotations are taken from Tito Orlandi's list of sigla of white monastery codices. And pause are the parts of speech. So you can see here, nuta is a noun, and the p before the nuta is an article. The documentation for the parts of speech is all on our website also, under the part of speech tagging tool. And then finally, token talk uh, is the smallest piece of data. And you can see it doesn't necessarily correspond to a word. Like here, the word kleronome is actually broken into two tokens. And you see that's because this word is broken apart by a line break. In the original manuscript, uh, this word um, begins on line one and ends on line two. If you open this little Visualization, the diplomatic text, you'll see that. See, nen tau kle roname. So the token is the smallest level of data, doesn't necessarily correspond to a word or a morpheme in Coptic. If you're searching, you probably don't want to search on the token layer. You probably want to search uh, within the norm layer if you're doing a search just for words. I'm going to scroll down to a different hit. Um, you can see here that the annotations here include a translation. And we don't have a translation for this particular manuscript witness to Abraham our father, but we do for the rest. So the translation is also included in the annotation. And you can view the text, the diplomatic transcription, by opening this option, the normalized text. If you want to read the entire normalized text, you can click on this as well. And if you hover over the normalized text, the translation will pop up. It also gives you the page numbers of the manuscript so that you can orient yourself within the text. Finally, the analytic view gives you the Coptic normalized text, the translation is in blue, and the part of speech tag is above each Coptic word aligned. So if you want to review your grammar, you can look at the analytic view to see the text. You can see all of these visualizations as well if you click on the little page icon next to each of the corpora. And you'll see a list of all the documents that compose that corpus and the different visualizations that are available. In our Bible corpora, the visualizations are a little different because our Bible text comes from the online 
Sahidic New Testament called Sahidica, which comes from in its earliest phase digitized text from David Brackey and the Packard Humanities Institute. Then it was modified again by Henny Takla and the St. Shenouda Society. And then Warren Wells edited it again before putting it online on his website, Sahitika. So we took the Sahitika New Testament text and have annotated it. So we don't have a manuscript view because it's not from one or particular manuscript. It's an edition. It's a scholarly edition. So we provide a view um, of each chapter broken up by verses. And in this text, the translation is actually an open source English translation that is not keyed to the Coptic. It's an English translation that's from the Greek, not the Coptic. One last piece of information about the data model before we leave Annas is I want to run a search to show you um, some parts of speech in Coptic known as morphemes, which aren't really their own standard part of speech, but are little morphs that are not words in and of themselves, but get added to words. And because of the history of the Egyptian language, they're worth tracking on their own, even though they're not really words. So let's search for this morpheme, mint. You can see here, it appears in at least 76 places. We have 76 hits. And if we open up our annotation grid, we see it here in the Sayings of the Desert Fathers. Mint ref shimsha nuta. In the place where there is not an imprint of divine worship. That whole thing is one word composed of four morphemes, mint, ref, shimsha, nuta. It's all one word, it's all one noun, but we've broken it down further into its constituent parts. So if you're doing a search for a word like nuta, you might actually want to search the morph level and the norm level. So if we search the morph level for Nuta, we'll get even more hits than we got when we searched the norm level. So here's four additional words in which Nuta appears as a constituent part. We encourage you to play around with the search capabilities in Annis. You can build fairly complex searches. And we've provided some example queries on our website so that you can see ways you can combine queries. So for example, if you want to search for Greek verbs in various corpora, you would search for the part of speech that's V for verb and the language of origin that's Greek. If you want to just search for focalizing converters, all you search for is the part of speech. Um, for another complicated search, um, you could search in a translation for any combination um, or any instance of these terms of kinship. So this searches for either mother or brother or father or sister or son or daughter, whether the word is capitalized or not. And you can see there are 37 hits. So those are some options for searching. Um, please play around with that and um, get familiar with the data model. If you want to just read texts, 
You can view the texts in HTML without even going into Annis. So for example, the letters of Beza are available. We've got two letters available here, the letter to Aphthonia and the letter to Thieving Nuns. You can view the diplomatic text here. You can view the normalized text, again, with the pop-up translation. And the analytic view that gives you the part of speech, normalized text broken up into morphemes, and the translation. This analytic view works only in Safari and Chrome. It does not work in Firefox. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Please let, please let us know if you have any comments or questions about the project. You can fork us on GitHub or send either myself, Caroline Schroeder, or my colleague, Amir Zeldes, at Georgetown University an email if you'd like to learn more or would like to play a part in the project. Thank you.